EA Sports, and the Corn Ferry Tour bring you the best young talent in the world of golf. From Pacific Palisades, just west of Los Angeles Riviera Country Club, the site for this, the final round of the California Classic. Well, we have already seen three scintillating, sometimes spectacular rounds of golf. By the time twilight comes calling later today, we will have a champion as we check the Sunday leaderboard. A number of folks in contention, including our leader, And that will be in the fairway. So a solid start here on this Sunday. This is really exciting. Out there looking for that first professional victory on the Corn Ferry Tour in contention late on a Sunday final round. Noda, you've been there. You've broken through. What do you, in fact, learn from a situation like this? Well, it's a two-part situation, Rich. The first is believing that you have the ability to go out there and execute and finish this thing off. And the second is just dealing with the nerves and, and the pressure that go along with these big moments. And being able to handle both of those components as you work through the final round is an essential part to putting together that winning recipe. This, only about five feet for birdie. Yeah, that's good, but it's a birdie here at one, and she'll get it to seven under. So while you're looking to make birdie at number one, you'd be happy with a par four at this second hole. It's 471 yards, but the winds are a factor. as a strong par four. And this round starting off strong after the birdie at the first. This in the fairway at number two. That one was running so hot.
the speed perfect there from off the green. The line was perfect too, and as a result, it's in for birdie. Moving now to the 434 yard, par 4 third at Riviera. Best way to attack here is to carry that fairway bunker on the left to set up a good angle on your approach. Okay, that's going to be safely in the fairway, and that's where you need to play from if you're going to make a final round surge. Down on the course, let's check in with Nota Begay the third. Looking at 149 to the hole, coming off back-to-back -back birdies, great chance to make it three in a row. It's a solid shot and a green in regulation, but a little away from the band. That one just going to sneak on by. So that safely in, it's a par here at the third. And she'll remain two shots off the pace. Well, this is just a great par three, 236 yards, the fourth hole. And as they like to say on tour, you can't fake this one. This will take your best shot and you'd be happy with a three here. And that's how a lot of people will play this fourth hole. Land it short and let it roll on. Very well done. Good effort, but that'll run two, three feet past the hole. Okay, that one finished off. It's a par here at four. And she'll stay three shots off the lead. You can see her at the par four fifth. There's a lot going on. It is one of the most interesting holes at Riviera, that canyon wall and out of bounds on the right. Then you have the trees down the left. But what really makes this hole distinctive is that grass mound cutting into the fairway just short of the green. Okay, that's going to be safely in the fairway, and that's where you need to play from if you're going to make a final round surge.
That ball gonna settle on the fringe for a good distance from the hole. That one finished off. It is a par here at five. And she's going to stay at eight under par. You don't see this too often, do you? A bunker cut directly into the green. And usually bunkers are front or guarding the right or left side. This one's smack in the center. It is one of the most unusual holes in all of golf. 169 yards to par three sixth here at Riviera. Okay, that's on to this sixth green. Not particularly close, but it does appear that there is at least a straight line to the hole. Mm, got it there, but not quite on target. Nicely read there. It is a par here at the sixth. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Here's another hole that is distinctly Riviera. 408 yards of par four. But you have that giant bunker going all the way down the left side and then the barranca on the right. Uh, the fairway closes in, pinches at about the 270 yard mark. So with all that's going on and as narrow as it gets, you have to hit it straight off the tee here. This starting toward the right side. And just what you want at this point in the round. You're trying to find a rhythm, hit fairways, hit the middle of the club face. That's what they did right there. Second shot coming up, and we say hello to Iona Steven. We're looking at 128 yards to the hole. Wind coming from behind, so you'll need to be careful where you land it. Another example of her, her excellent balance and timing, and that's a good shot. Going to have to take pretty much a full swing at this one with the putter because this one is into the hill and the hole is cut back. Come on, come on. 
Yep, not bad. Had to put a little extra into that one, but got it there. That's a pretty good effort. That one finished off. It'll be a par here at seven. And her score is gonna stay right where it is. The surprises don't stop here on Riviera's front side as we come to the 433 yard par four eight. One of course designer George C. Thomas's all time favorite. A split fairway is the unique feature here. Like many holes, this one forces you to really have a strategy. Yeah, playing for this right side fairway, and that is right where you want to be. Second shot now from right at 100 yards. I really like her golf swing, and that's another good shot. She should be happy with that one. An outside look here for Birdie. Oh, yes! Plenty of pace to get up that slope. It is in for a Birdie. And she'll move to nine under par. On to Riviera's ninth now at 458 yards. You get a look at the beautiful clubhouse in the distance, but don't let your mind wander from the task at hand. This is no easy hole. Bunkers line the fairway on both sides, and three more greet you up near this elevated green. Good strike right there, and this is going to split the middle. From the fairway, we check in with Noda. Beautiful look at the ninth with the clubhouse in the background, but players beware, severely uphill. Whatever club you select, add one more. Well, had a good look at the green, but couldn't cash it in. In the rough now, wondering what might have been. Fourteen feet to the hole. Oh, there's a good putt. Well done here at the ninth, as that will save par. And that is going to finish off a three-under front side as they go out in 32. Up next, the 315-yard par four tenth. This may be the most beloved hole at Riviera, short par four that offers so many options. Certainly drivable, but only a perfect drive will hold this green. And the miss right will usually result in a bogey or worse.
And that's what we'll need to see on these final nine holes if they're going to get back into it. That's in the fairway at 10. So that in for par to start this backside. And she'll remain one shot off the lead. Again, here's a hole where you know instantly you're at Riviera. 583 yard, 11th. It's the second par five on the course, but you, you look at those eucalyptus trees lining both sides of the fairway. That's Riviera. And then the grass barranca, which is a couple of hundred yards from the green. You have to factor that in on your second shot. Terrific hole. Okay, that's going to be just fine, short of the road. Good tee shot here at 11. And that second shot on this par five, it just came out too low. Came out like a bullet. That first bounce, it wasn't going to stop. Second bounce, wasn't going to stop. And just ran over the bat. Eight feet remaining here for birdie. Uh, that's going to slide by to the left. Good work to get into that position, but couldn't finish it off. So that brushed in for par here at 11. And she's going to remain a shot back. The 12th hole at Riviera is a tricky one at 479 yards. It's narrow with OB to the left, and it forces you to carry a ravine on your approach into a green protected by a sycamore tree left and a large bunker right. That will do just fine. This is where club selection is so important. Second shot into that stiff breeze.
No missteps there. It is a par here at 12. And she'll remain at nine under. Next, it's on to the 13th at 459 yards, where the 12th bent left to right. Number 13 goes the other way, trying to make you utilize all the shots in your arsenal. That's the mark of a really good design. This one again featuring a narrow landing zone leading up to a smallish heart-shaped green. There's no way that ball could have gone through the tree, but somehow it did. It's finished up actually all right. Hmm, not sure what happened there. Wrong club selection, poor execution. Regardless, a lot of meat still on that bone. This from seven feet. Slides by to the right. Just never had that on target. Okay, that one finished off. It is a bogey here at unlucky number 13. And she's going to fall a couple of shots off the pace. Ahead now to the 14th, the par 3 at 192 yards. This green's on a slight incline, and given the ocean air, probably plays a little longer than you think. The narrow green is flanked by two bunkers left and another to the right. Boy, that one was coming in hot, and it winds up carrying over the back of the green. Now, from left of the green, a second. Okay, good putt, and a par here at 14. And her score is going to stay right where it is. Next up, the par 4 15th at 487 yards. It's another one that favors someone who can move the ball left to right off the tee. If you've got enough to work it over that fairway bunker right, it should leave you with an open look to a fairly accessible green. All right, in the fairway.
12 feet still to go. Oh no, I thought that was in for sure. Just a little jag right at the end, gonna leave it on the lip. Okay, a bogey here at the 15. And she'll drop back to three shots off the lead. The 16th hole at Riviera, the final par three of the round. It's a tough one at 166 yards. Hit it anywhere on the putting surface, you'll likely be just fine. Miss, and you're almost certain to be in one of the four bunkers framing the entirety of the green. Now from the bunker. Yeah, just a little splash out on this par three. That is a good-looking pass out of the bunker right there. Got that to stop in a good place, leaving just a few feet for par. Okay, didn't want to let that one get away. It is a par here at 16, and she'll remain at 7-under. Next up, the longest hole on the course at 590 yards, the par 5-17. It plays slightly uphill the entire way as it works toward the clubhouse and features bunkers on either side of the fairway. No issues here, that is into the fairway. So in the fairway, but a pretty good number to carry here for a second to the par five. Just a good solid shot right there with that three wood, Frank. That's an aggressive layup, really, trying to force that three wood down and get it as close as possible to the green. That's two good shots if you can't reach the par five. I was asking for it to go, and it listened. That is a really good shot. Oh, finishing strong. That's in for birdie here at 17. And with it, she's got it now to eight under par. Such a unique closing hole, the 18th here at Riviera at 475 yards. You're asked to hit your tee shot onto a 30-foot rise that features hillside to the left and gully to the right from there. It is a tough approach, 
into the amphitheater green. Well, it's a rarity on the PJ Tour, but a perfect 14 for 14 off the tee. This has been a marvelous exhibition. From the fairway, let's go to Noda. Tough not to get distracted with the majestic amphitheater setting here at the 18th at Riviera, but be mindful, you must land the ball left of the hole to get it close. This ball not quite going to get there. It'll come up a bit short and on the fringe. Yep, not bad. I had to put a little extra into that one, but got it there. That's a pretty good effort. Okay, so that will wind up a par at the last. And that will go down as a final round, 69. Well, Frank, our featured player, getting closer to that breakthrough, you can just feel it. Come up a little short this week, but that victory's out there. It is. We, we have the best seat in the house, and we see that. I mean, the ability's there, but there's obviously just that little bit of doubt. Once that doubt's arise, that'll come, and victories, maybe, maybe thick and fast. So, for Frank Nabilo.